currently I'm working at uh, Bookman Show. Uh, I'm leading a PWA team over there. Uh, so yeah, here's a story, a short story I'm going to tell you that, you know, what were the problems that we had to migrate to React. Also, some of the patterns and the practices that, you know, that made us, for, that we worked for. So, uh, back in 2014, this is what I felt for, you know, most of the websites. I mean, they were really slow and, I mean, if I talk about Book My Show, the website, it was also slow. So, the main problem we faced was page load time. And yes, the first page. So it took really long. The page load time was like 7.7 .7 seconds and the first page was 12 seconds. This was a graph we had. What were the problems? The main problem was we had like the same code base for both mobile and desktop. And we actually realized, you know, by the time that, you know, a lot of bookings were happening through mobiles. Why are we shipping, you know, uh, desktop, I mean, why are we shipping the desktop code to mobile? Also, the second thing was like, uh, when I had, when I saw the code, it was like, you know, one of the files had like 3,500 lines of code. I was like, oh man, come on. And thirdly, the URL structures were not so clean. I mean, it was uh, randomly put up, so the URLs were not so clean. Also, I could, I was not uh, able to manage my state. I mean, uh, navigating through the pages, I did not understand how do I manage my state. So these were the problems. And yes, so we thought of like, let's fight against this uh, legacy code and you know, have the motivation to turn everything to React. Though it was not easy because when you have, actually have to, you know, make and understand your product managers and, you know, your uh, leads that, you know, come on, let's check this out. Let's uh, pick up something new. It's very difficult to make them understand because for them what matters is revenue, business. That's it. No matter what stack, a tech stack you use. But then we developers actually made them understand that, you know, let's fight against this and make it better. So yeah, this is where uh, our journey actually started. And so the main motivation for us was to ship it. No matter what, we are going to ship it. So uh, meanwhile, even when we started working on, you know, moving our uh, PHP tech stack to react. Uh, there were a few goals that we had planned initially. Uh, the first one was uh, we planned for the optimization, like we need, uh, the speed needs to be increased. Secondly, we had this in mind that the entire booking flow, I mean the entire movie booking flow should be completed in about say 30 seconds, I mean the entire checkout flow. Also, we wanted this add to home screen feature just like the native app experience so yes these were the goals that we had in mind even before we started off so why react so there are multiple frameworks why we chose react so the reason we chose react because for us performance really mattered so we need, we needed something and react kind of has the virtual dom feature uh, which kind of you know, uh, so it acts like a, a state machine wherein it only updates whatever has changed. So your entire DOM, the re-render part is just taken care of by the uh, DOM. Whereas, in, you know, uh, you, when you're actually updating the DOM and playing with the real DOM, it creates a lot of problem. So this is the reason we chose React because we, we wanted a tremendous increase in our performance. Secondly, what React gives you is, it kind of enables you to declaratively describe your user interface and the model. So, you need not track the entire state changes. I mean, whatever you're changing in your UI, whatever you're updating, 
you, React takes care of uh, updating and triggering the re-renders to your DOM automatically. So you need not worry about all that. And trust me, like PHP didn't give us all this. The first thing is, I, I would say that, you know, it was, it was a comp component driven. So, uh, in PHP, I would uh, write a code, say, you know, if I, if I had to write a seat layout, if I had to design my seat layout page, I would actually, so I, I actually saw that there were, you know, tons of uh, code which were repeated. I mean, just by saying, I don't know why. But then, uh, when we chose React, it was, it kind of uh, was very u useful to us because it behaved like, you know, a plug and play thing. Wherein, you know, our component, if I've created a component once, I can use it at multiple places. So, composable, reusable, and yes, testable, which we'll be talking later, was, was, was the best thing that React could provide. So if you see uh, both of these cards, like you know, on the left hand side and right hand side, one of them is a movie card and one of them is an event card. So we did not actually go and build the, you know, two of them separately. We just had a pure, you know, a super card component, wherein by changing the props, you know, I could actually make sure that you know, okay, fine. If uh, I'm passing something like say e events, I would actually see the events card and. If I'm passing something for movies, I would see movies. So I actually didn't go and, you know, uh, I had to write two se separate codes. So this is where React come, comes into picture and you, you actually, your work begins simple. You are not repeating your code. As a developer, I think this is, this is what you should be thinking about. So th this, is, this was a code uh, for Supercard component wherein, you know, so you actually see that uh, you're passing the props and the label, and I mean, nothing changes. So whether it is event card or whether it is movie card, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, next one was, again, the show times. So you see, uh, we have one show times, show times per year, and second one year. Again, this is a component. So we had this component, and based on the props and whatever style, I mean, whatever props I'm passing as a style, it, it got rendered. I mean, I'm not just going and creating the other, uh, I mean, other code in my application. So it, it is so plug and play and it is so re reusable that you just go and change your props and you can use it in different variations of your pages. The second thing was uh, there was no direct manipulation with the DOM. So if you see, uh, when you direct, we directly access your DOM, it demands like high performance and you should be ready for it. I mean, it is very expensive. If you're, if you're dealing with your actual DOM, it is very expensive. But then, when you're dealing with virtual DOM, it doesn't really matter because your virtual DOM always keeps a track, you know, whatever changes, it will only re-render that part. So that was where React was very good for us. Also, the rendering speed, since I told that it was not a manipulation with the direct DOM, it was always the virtual DOM which was into picture and always the changes, uh, so wherever your state changes, only that part will be re-rendered. So the rendering speed was much, much higher than, you know, if I compare it to PHP. Also, uh, it was it, since React is a view layer, you kind of you uh, can use it with any of the frameworks. I mean, uh, you can use it with say you can actually use it with PHP as well. You can use it with any framework. So it kind of just gave you a view layer for any of the frameworks that you wanted to use in your application. So that is where we wanted to use and try it. So yeah, we spoke about uh, React a lot now. So we, when we migrated, we thought of you know also a lot of companies were actually we had actually started using Redux, and uh, we actually had no time to see whether we, sh we should be using Redux with React. So just so we chose uh, Redux because we actually wanted something called a store at our uh, application level. 
But then we actually didn't make a choice whether to go for flux, whether to go for redux. We just went because there was companies who were actually using React Redux architecture and so that, so also we also went with that. But then later by, by we, we did knew what were the advantages of using Redux, but we didn't make the personal choice of actually choosing what to go for. So uh, yeah, uh, Redux kind of gives you a state management, whereas wherein it has a central store for your application and you know you need not worry about whatever whatever changes you're making. So whatever whenever your state changes, it's being communicated to your store. And you have a single store. So uh, it matters whether you're using a Flux architecture or you're using a you know, Redux because uh, Flux doesn't support the single store uh, thing. And yes, Redux does. It, it has a single store and it kind of gives you uh, access to whatever, uh, whatever state changes is happening accordingly your DOM updates. Also, the predictable state updates uh, is much like you know you're using uh, uh, you're using to uh, try and you know you're testing it in a much uh, predictable way. As in, you're not depending on any of the other models or other uh, databases. Uh, also. Uh, when you use the Redux architecture, you kind of also see that you know you're using uh, pure reducer reducer functions. Uh, I would not go much deeper into it. You can have a look at the link and know about what Redux architecture actually is and why we actually use pure reducer functions for it. So this is just an example wherein uh, I'm using pure reducer functions. So uh, pure means you know, any input given and output, you cannot manipulate your function. So a function will simply give you the output as it is. I mean, there would be no mutation in it. So if you see uh, all of the, you know, the reducers, whatever I'm returning is just the pure functions that I'm returning. Third, uh, the Redux thing also kind of gave us, you know, the time travel debugging, which was, so time travel debugging, uh, there's a Redux Dev Tools, which kind of gives you access to, you know, it, fetch, it has all your uh, dispatched actions and all your stores. It can, you can actually go and inspect and see, you know, what has happened. So you see, you know, uh, if you actually made the changes to your reducers and it says, okay, you know, something is not. So you actually can inspect just like you do in the browser, right? The JavaScript developers are uh, familiar to the dev to Chrome dev tools. So in the same way, you can actually see whatever, what is happening. I mean, the, it, it gives you an entire bunch of things where you can inspect each and every actions that you have dispatched or, you know, what is happening in your store. So for the migration process, for us, uh, initially when we started, was, we didn't really know that, you know, how should we uh, start with a boilerplate or something like that. What we did was, we know that we, uh, you know, we want to use React and Redux. So we started uh, building, uh, you know, React components on CodePen. That is how we started. And uh, yes, I we did start like that. Uh, because we didn't really had uh, things in mind, you know, that you know, this should be the architecture or something like that, the boilerplates and stuff. But then initially, once we had all the components ready in the, at the code pen level, we started uh, thinking on, you know, the build process, that is where we used Webpack. And after we were done, we got the similar idea that, you know, okay, well, our components are ready now, let's just uh, try uh, stitching them to our code base and that's where we decided the uh, uh, architecture and it went on like for five months. So first, uh, when we started off, uh, we started off with the website. I mean, uh, even before, uh, I mean, we chose to build our mobile website, uh, the PWA, we thought of giving it a shot on website. Let's build, you know, one of the listings in 
uh, react when we actually failed. Uh, this is because uh, there was no server side rendering, we faced a lot of issue for SEO. So, okay, we just reverted it back. And we started off with our mobile website. That is a fresh thing uh, where we started with, so there was no PHP hindrance uh, with our code. Because I'm sorry, you will get questions. I can't interrupt. Okay, so I'll answer you back. Uh, so yeah, so this is uh, where we started building our mobile website, and uh, yes, uh, we reverted it back. Uh, means that we shifted it back to the PHP text tag because the we couldn't afford the SEO problems. After all, it's business, and. Uh, Yes, so uh, uh, even when you try to, so this was one of the problems that we faced while we were using, uh, we did it on website. If you try and use your React router with your PHP view, you'll always face a problem. And yes, that, that, that is where we also faced a few problems and but finally we could resolve it. But then yes, ultimately our goal was the mobile website since the analytics data straight away proved us that, you know, all of your bookings are done through mobiles. And yes, we went page by page. Uh, we went for movie listing, show times, the seat layout you see was the very difficult job for us because it involved a lot of things like D3. We had to see how we could use the D3 thing in React. And yes, uh, we did a good job, by the way, in like six, seven months. Uh, yeah. Uh, then we picked up uh, the events listing because uh, this was also uh, the part of our, uh, I mean, the mobile website. Oh shit! This was, uh, you know, a bad thing for us because we had to make it work on the UC browser now. Uh, so yes, uh, for React we did use a uh, Babel polyfill. Uh, which kind of, uh, like you could use a promise object or assign, a lot, lot of things don't work on UC browser, for that we had to use Debian Polyfill. So there are a few issues uh, that uh, we faced. We faced the word wrapping issues on you know uh, UC browser, by the way we fixed it using no wrap. And, uh, then there were a few things which didn't work in flex model because it was not entirely supported by the UC browsers. And the position fixed behaved like very weird. We didn't even understand what we are doing. And yeah, so since uh, UC browser, like it has only partial support, it was mentioned on their website as well. We did face few few JavaScript issues as well sometimes. Uh, what were the aftermaths like when we actually did this job and we actually found that you know our application was about 440 KB, which is like super. The business was like, how did you do it? I mean, it was like awesome thing. And secondly, the initial load time. This is what was needed for us. So four seconds and yeah, the need the subsequent loads were like 2.94 seconds. Again, the conversion rates on mobile, like PWA was 80%. So we got a party. We actually did. <laughs> and yeah, the first paint like went on uh, from 12 seconds, like not 12 seconds also, like from 13 seconds to 8 seconds. And then this was like... <laughs> Uh, so we also got featured in Chrome Dev Summit. Uh, yes, this was also a great achievement for us because that shows like 80% increase in the conversion rate. And uh, continuing the transition, we are still, uh, you know, converting our desktop in that mode to React Tech Stack, and 
So I'm going to tell you a few patterns that worked for us. So this might work for you or might not, but you can take it as a key takeaway. So, so pre-shaking feature of Webpack helped us a lot because when we moved from PHP to React, so pre-shaking is uh, uh, nothing but it's it's like so I have uh, exported two functions, say square and q, and uh, if you see in the code, I've only you know imported q and I've not imported the square. So tree shaking helps in the dead code elimination. I mean, whatever uh, whatever is unused, the unused exports will not be taken care by, right? So if you use this tree shaking feature of Webpack, it will actually eliminate all your unused export. So this is where PHP could not do it right because there's no import and export thing out there. Also, uh, we used, we kind of used pure functions called map and reduce. We strictly uh, followed this pattern which helped us. Uh, we, uh, we had this thing in mind that, you know, we should be using a, a set state, I mean, using a function in the set state instead of an object. Because uh, what happens is uh, when you use set state, sometimes it doesn't behave how it should behave. So you should always make it a point. So if you see here, I'm just passing you know an object. Instead, uh, I would do it this way that you know I'm passing a previous state as an argument. So you should always be doing. These were certain practices that we used that helped us. Because sometimes set state behaves differently. Uh, because it is us, it is asynchronous, and it behaves in a different way, wherein it might not update your state immediately. So this is where you should pass, uh, you know, the previous state as an argument and a callback. Also, uh, we believe in you know replacing the node modules with indigenous library. So we built our own. Uh, so we were using Moment, uh, and uh, it was like too huge. And that's why we decided, go on, let's make something called BMS Summit. And uh, we made uh, BMS Summit, which kind of uh, had only those things, what we actually wanted. Moment was like kind of very huge. Even the things we don't need that were getting shipped off and that were added in the bundle, which kind of again, uh, you know, reduced the things. But then we figured out, come on, let's make something called BMS Summit. Uh, it has downloads though. Uh, it has like 49994 994 downloads so far and we started this I think uh, last year. So yes, I would suggest that you know try building your own stuff and always look up, uh, always compare between libraries or packages that you are using. Yeah, be choosy about using libraries just like Trump is. Uh, because uh, I would say you would have different uh, libraries, different packages, but then experimenting around them will ultimately give you, you know, a satisfaction to your product. It will increase the page load speed. It will improve your product. So few things that we chose, we chose Tim over Immutable. Uh, I will be going through what is Tim. We chose Redux 0 over Redux. This is this this is what we chose while we were experimenting things. <coughs> also we chose Redux first router or React router 4. So Tim, uh, again uh, I think a uh, few weeks back we even removed Tim. So we keep on experimenting things uh, but when, uh, when we chose to uh, use Immutable we found that we are not doing a lot of uh, writing operations on the arrays, which is what immutable is meant for. We are doing more of reading stuff, so let's use Tim, which is quite, you know, smaller in size than immutable. That's where we uh, chose Tim. Uh, if you want to have more detail about, you know, what, when to use Tim, when to use immutable, when to use seamless, uh, Immutable, just uh, go through the link, you can find more distinguished. But this is what worked for us. This, uh, here's a small example where you know I'm using the merge thing and uh, from the Tim and I'm just merging it. 
so it kind of, it kind of gives you more uh, things but it's on you to decide whether you know what we should pick up because for us we wanted uh, something small we don't want an ad hoc library that would uh, that i would depend on also uh, redux we chose redux 0 or redux because uh, sometimes uh, i felt sometimes i feel that even we felt that uh, uh, you know redux is doing just way too much i mean come on i'm writing my actions i'm writing my reducers i'm writing my action types and what not in different different files and i'm shit how do i maintain stuff and how do i mean how do i make a developer learn so sometimes the learning curve also mattered but uh, when we saw redux 0 it was like not writing your reducers and very lightweight so uh, here what is happening is i'm just creating my store and i'm actually writing my actions and if you see in my component i'm just directly calling my actions so just the reducer part is actually gone the action types is actually gone my state changes is directly being done by from my actions i mean i don't need to do all that stuff because sometimes it kind of when you start making you know when you start from scratch or learning the learning curve is actually very steep for redux you need to actually understand how it works when you're actually using redux but for us i think redux zero worked well also uh, redux first router so initially we started with uh, react router 4 but uh, then what we felt is you know we are actually instead of writing react application i am writing the react router application that's what i felt so the reason uh, we chose redux first router was so if you see react router 4 uh, it deals with the history api and you know updates the changes to your view and your store now your state is just unknown to what urls you are using i mean there's no and the term that you say that you know redux is a single source of truth is just gone because your store is not aware what is happening right at the urls level it is just not aware so here i say okay you know the router thing is uh, the single source of truth for router is react router and my for my store is redux but that part is already gone i have like two single source of truth so that is where we chose redux first router because uh, there were a lot of problems also with the react router if you see it's also mentioned on the docs that you know uh, you can use react, react router but you know redux will be the source of truth for your data and the react router will be the source of truth for your urls because all your store thing will not be known to the url the other problems were uh, update blocking and no deep integration uh, this means that uh, you couldn't actually know what is actually happening you know the state any uh, any uh, store would not come to know about your urls at all so there were a lot of uh, solutions for it like you see there was react router redux a lot of solutions uh, were given by the communities and all set of uh, you see on the screen but uh, we chose uh, redux first router because this is where we actually got what we needed we actually could see that so this uh, redux first router does not think in terms of components it uh, thinks in terms of state application like whether your state application knows about your urls or not so here my urls would directly you know communicate with the actions and so uh, does the state so whenever so any changes to the state then my url would know and any changes to the urls my state would know. this is what i wanted so for example if you see the older approach uh, if i have a sidebar component wherein i have say two states uh, say open and close i would do it this way say uh, you know so case sidebar closed and sidebar open 
and in case of closed it returns me false this is the older approach how i would do it with reducers but then how i would do it with redux first router is i have a set of you know applications so this is my uh, entire application i'm just saying that say case home i actually know that you know uh, in case of settings my uh, sidebar will be open so i'm not thinking in terms of components i'm thinking in terms of my state of an application the state of an application tells me that on the settings page the sidebar will remain open uh, it gave me way too much and yes we were like this but then uh, one important point to understand is wherever you are like understanding the architectural decisions behind the tools you are using is perhaps more important than many things a new package does for you so you need not pick up some of the package or tools just because someone is saying try understand it might uh, i mean it might not suit for your product and vice versa it might suit for your product so always keep on experimenting things because when we reached the state we actually had gone through a lot of things like we did try react router for we then manually say that you know come on, i don't know really use react router for it is it is it is not nice it doesn't way like that it doesn't work like that so you need to decide on things by using it also uh, we built a uh, common components uh, this was uh, so this is uh, the common components so what we believe in the when you're working with the react redux architecture components are your power this is what react gives you right why not create a, so we kind of we call it a design framework style guide at book my show so any developer who is working on it and whatever component he is creating or adding will be added to this style guide so he or she before adding has to look up whether it is there or not so we kind of have from like counter to checkbox to even event cards we have all of them and you can actually go there and you know you can edit the code and see like if i need to see the book button and if i actually need to code say you know just make it proceed i just change that i change at one place and i import the same thing i mean i import this component in my code and use it so this is how we created so this was a, like a set of uh, design i mean a set of components that we use throughout our application because uh, when your team grows you would not know you know what components you've added and i think a component should all together be a separate repo this is what i feel and you can always import whatever you need uh also uh, this was uh, the thing we chose that you know we initially we were using higher order components but uh, later on we started using prop types uh, you can have a look at this article because i cannot go deep into it uh, also uh, the reason uh, we chose uh, prop types so prop types is no, uh, nothing in react you, you just pass you know prop types as a function what wherein the value is of the prop types is a function so it's nothing new uh, it's just the functional way itself but it is way better than the higher order components wherein you keep passing function i mean you keep passing components to another components also uh, uh, we did use this stuff called you know optimizing with with should component uh, update so at a lot of places uh, you might see that you know uh, whenever a state changes uh, all of your dom and the sub trees all of them are changing and you might not want that right so you can use uh, this uh, should component update 
uh, when you want to actually optimize stuff, you can go for it. A uh, lot of things like uh, strict lint rules. These were the things possible, like if I could imagine doing it in PHP, it was possible for me, but then it was like kind of, uh, how do I even start with it? So, a lot of things we did like pre-comment pre uh, pre hooks, uh, we actually also run test cases on pre-comment hooks and we use flow uh, for the compile time checking. So, a lot of things uh, when we started using React kind of was easy for us like linting things like using flow type. If I would imagine these things in PHP, I don't know how I would do that. Definitely there's a way but then it, the person has to struggle a lot. Also testing components in React was like super. This is altogether a different topic. Uh, if you see testing uh, with PHP, we kind of tested few things, but then we stopped because we kind of had to use uh, so many, uh, so many different frameworks. Like if, if you have to uh, use coverage results, you use Istanbul and whatnot. But then yes, when React, it was like very easy. You can, uh, you, uh, you have the snapshot feature as well. Um, in React. So for uh, in Bookmare Show, we use Jestin and Zam for testing React components. Uh, also, uh, we uh, we found that A/B testing was much simpler when we switched to React. Uh, this was a just a very uh, good example wherein we actually found the conversion rates increased. Uh, we had a sidebar at the left hand side and suddenly we decided to change it at the top to A-B testing. This is when we uh, changed our text tag to React and we saw that you know uh, the traffic increased to 4%. That means when my sidebar was at this level, I mean nobody would even go and click on events. So this is, this we observed on events. Few key takeaways from my side is focus on small and consistent wins. Like it's okay that you know you take uh, more of time, but give it, give it, give or give your best, and try choosing small stuff at a time. Also, move fast and break nothing. So as you keep moving, you see that there are a lot of libraries coming up. Just habituate it. I mean. Accept it and try uh, learning it and implement it in your project. Also, learn out. I mean, when you're learning, do make sure that you're passing it to others. Uh, because also we at Book My Show initially faced a lot of problem when it comes to, you know, making or uh, when you're trying to uh, make learn the PHP developer, the React tech stack. But then, yes, uh, whenever, whatever you learn, just keep passing. That's it. Thank you.